things, I think. Yeah. All right, let me just and, I, and I reject that notion strongly that we did not try hard enough. In fact, the last thing we put on the table, we said, you know what? We will withdraw all proposals that we have offered. You come with a proposal now. Let us find mediators. In fact, no proposal was ever placed on the table by the other side. We placed every single proposal on the table for a unity arrangement, every single one. The other side was simply not interested. You said it, it takes two hands to clap. And while we keep doing this, the other side was refusing to meet us so that we could make some melodious song. <laughs> they refused even having mediators. And we were saying, look, we are willing to withdraw everything we propose. Tell us what you would like to have happen. Let's see if we can facilitate that. And even in that moment, they refused. You know why? Because they did not want to share power. They did not want to have a responsible government. They did not even want to be able to go to the house to debate a budget. They were only interested in keeping and hoarding power and authority maintaining onto the themselves quo. and maintaining the status quo. Right, let's hear Nicosi's thoughts on this issue. Well, as a political leader, what I would have done is sent a letter to the board political entities to meet. Um, they both reached out to me. They were unavailable, but they asked, well, Mr. Duke, the political leader, he would have said, you know, send your recommendation and they will look at it. I sent a recommendation because I think presiding officer was the issue. And I suggested that, okay, since you all cannot come together on that decision, why not elect me as a presiding officer? I sit with the chief secretary and the board political leaders and we plan a date for election and we go back to the polls. I resign as soon as the date is set and I said, um, I think the, the political leader for Canem, she reached out. She said that she will look at it and if it comes up, she will put it on the table or not. And, you know, I, I said to the both parties, no response and things. So I believe that it's actually it's, it's a hold on to power. I saw the PNM, the, the PDP, they tried. But this shows to the people that neither side um, did not want to budge to the people and did not have the people at heart. No, not yes. saying that the PDP will try again, but at the end of the day, the people of Tobago were already in a pandemic and looking at what would have happened. You have to say that the both of them helped Tobago to ransom. Okay, all right, thank you, Nicosi. All right, so um, looking as we are moving along, you ask yourself, we're going into elections again. Has there been any challenge, Denise, from your um, side in terms of your party attracting potential candidates to join the fight for these elections? Uh, well, I mean, being a new party, uh, you expected to have um, challenges. But I feel that in the end, we did very well considering we were a new party and we now have 13 out of 15 candidates. Previously, other parties never got to, you know, that percentage of an achievement in terms of bringing out a new party. So we did quite well. And also we feel very proud that on that slate, we actually have three members of the youth and six women, which is a 46% um, showing for women. I think it's the most women ever on a slate, not just in Tobago, but in the country to offer themselves for service. So we feel good that we have actually offered a balanced slate to the people of Tobago, uh, youth, maturity, experience, and certainly women. And Thank you. That's great. That's great. Very good use of the numbers there, Denise. It didn't escape me that <laughs> this is the first time we're having more than 12, you know, um, seats up for grabs. But Farley, let's hear your thoughts on it. Well, we were a new party in 2017, and we were able to get 100% of candidates for all seats. So this is not the first time a new party is coming on the scene in Tobago. And so if we're looking at experiences past versus experiences now. Um, I don't know if, if they tried, if IDA tried hard enough. I can't speak to the internal arrangements, but as a party that was brand new for 2017 election, we, were, we, we did not have challenges finding candidates. And for this election, we had to have a very lengthy screening process, um, a very thorough one because the numbers of people offering themselves was quite quite a lot. Maybe we could have lent some to 
other parties. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. And I saw also that um, in the round, in the mix of things, there's a, you know, um, almost something reminiscent of uh, a Shaolin Temple movie where, you know, you have the student and the teacher oh, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. a particular district in that's, Tobago. That's great. <laughs> but we'll speak more on that. Yes. Nikosi, all right, so you are the lone candidate um, for your party. Have there been challenges on your end in terms of attracting potential candidates to join you in your um, fight for the elections? Yes, yes, a number of issues, but at the end of the day, we also looked at the political landslide. We see the battle between the PDP and the PNM. And after all, we, we did send our nomination, got five, two, we had matters before the court, they did not pass the screening committee, and then a situation happened with me um, and my family. So, you know, after the committee met, they say, you know what, let's just go with you. The, the whole thing is just to get that one seat, because now we have 15. And you don't know what your one seat could do, damages too. They are not damages, but you know, it could actually work whereby we have seven, seven, and you become the one. Okay, so then you, you're looking at a situation such as what occurred in St. Vincent some years ago, where James' son, Mitchell, who passed recently, um, he ended up being the one person who held the balance of power. So that's the game plan for your party, Nikosi, correct? That's the game plan for the party going forward. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much for that. So, um, Dr. Sawyer Fat, Denise, tell us, in terms of your party and the fact that, okay, you said you had 13 candidates, do you think that there is any, you know, residual tension between yourself and your former party in terms of your way forward and the rationale for you forming your party as a separate entity from where you once were without well, calling names? I would think <laughs> that uh, given now that I am really uh, one of their opponents, I don't think that they would be happy with that. But this is what life is about. And, um, you know, sometimes you just have to move on and make your way and, and, and read the people. Let's face it, in January, 51% of the people were not inspired to vote either way. And therefore, you had a number of people who were underrepresented. And we felt that coming out that we, we can um, adequately represent this group. But you also had uh, in January the 49% who voted and those who were very uh, disheartened by the fact that either side could not come together and form the legislature and move forward to some level of shared governance. And so in those cases, um, and we add to that currently, you know, what has been happening on the hustings between them, you know, I, I think that we stand... Okay, thank you. It has been very encouraging out Excellent. there. Excellent. All right. Okay. So we just have to take a short commercial break at this point, but we will be back very shortly with our conversations with a chief. So who knows, maybe out of tonight's discussions on the 7th, you may realize the value of attending and participating in conversations with a chief hosted by the Civil Net Society. Thank you. Visit So Amazing Limited for all your sewing machine needs. We supply, service, and repair all types of sewing machines. We provide two weeks warranty on all service and repairs. Check us out at Unit 4, D Plaza, Dutch Fort Scarborough, Tobago, for our specialty Singer Domestic Heavy Duty Machines. Our opening hours are Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call us at 309-6350 and 710-4749 or WhatsApp for technical assistance. The people, the personality, the candidates, the results. Keep viewing Tobago Channel 5 as we bring to you all the results and react to the race for power, part two. 
tune in to Tobago Channel 5 and Pulse 89.5 FM on Thursday, 2nd December at 6 p.m. for part two of a THA election special broadcast on Tobago's autonomy and economy with attorney at law Deborah Mormigans and Dr. Vanish James. When you need electronics, find what you want quickly at Ted Electronics. We have tons of brand name items in smartphones, headphones, and speakers. For the best in electronics, check Ted. Amazing service and the lowest prices guaranteed. Located upstairs, Morshead Plaza, Bethany Road, Tobago. Ted Electronics, your ideal choice for electronics. Paying your Trico cable bill just got easier. Simply log on to www.tricott.com and choose online payment. Or log into your online banking, RBL, FCB, or Scotia Bank and add Trico as a pay. Yep, it's that easy. No stress, no more hassle, no more long lines. Just pure relaxation and social distancing from the comfort of your space. For more information, contact 639-4457 or log on to www.tricott.com. Trico Industries Limited. We are here for you. back viewers and the persons who are following us on Facebook as it's being streamed live. These are our conversations with a chief hosted by the Civil Net Society. And if at all you look favorite political parties is missing, it's not for lack of invitation. All parties were invited, and those who are here are the ones who accepted the invitation. And we also have Nikosi Phillips, who is on Zoom, and that invitation was also accepted. So as we continue our conversations with the chief, you've had the issue all the time of complaints of lack of transparency and lack of proper accountability in the THE. I would love to hear what is the PDP going to do differently under the leadership of Mr. Farley Chavez Augustine? Tell us. Sure. Um, well, what we have already started is that we have started by ensuring all of our candidates sign a social contract. Now, a social ending, but I've made it clear publicly that every single one of my candidates will be held to a higher order than what we have seen and that they know beforehand that should they step out of line, I will have no problem removing or treating with any of them. That's the first step. And that, yes, that also includes Mr. Watson Solomon Duke. The THA is in bad need of a forensic audit. When we look at every single Auditor General's report, of the THA between 2000 and one of them were, was returned with an adverse opinion. In some cases, by how we could have as much as half no receipts to show what it was spent on. We, we have a gross mismanagement in, in several divisions. We have to change the way we do business. And part of our plan is to create e-governance platforms that will actually add what we do. Things like contract procurement, the listing of contracts that were, were given out, uh, public projects, so that people can be part and parcel of every single project, every single step of the way. The key to, to reducing corruption and to ensure we have greater transparency is people participation in the, on the table, it can be virtual, and allowing them to be able to scrutinize every single thing we do, and allowing them to have, it influences what we do. Ooh. Treat differently with the issues of lack of transparency and lack of proper accountability which have plagued the THA. And I, I think we, we must accept 
that as a fact because the Auditor General's reports have been very consistent in that regard. Correct. But I will treat with it in the way that, I mean, I was a previous Secretary of Community Development and Culture. And I mean, certainly we were able to do things in a transparent and accountable way um, such that, you know, that division, whilst I was there, was not plagued with any of the issues. And therefore, it is really about working uh, in better coordination with your uh, administrative accounting officers to make sure the systems are in place uh, to, in, to, to um, at the end of the day, be able to account for not just the resources, but even, you know, all of your tangible assets, okay? Additionally, you know, accountability also begins at the level of our legislature, where you have a public accountability committee. And therefore, paying respect to that committee is very important. So to ensure that from our end of the administration, that the public accountability committee works and that people could see it's actually, um, you know, effective. Uh, and additionally, to ensure that we activate the petition part of that legislative uh, process so that we involve the people of Tobago in that process. So they don't just have to sit back and look. They can actually petition um, you know, actively to ensure that their voices are heard, their questions can be answered. And you know, those are some of the areas that certainly we will be ensuring Thank that you. Happens. Thank you, Denise. And Nikosi, how would you face those challenges if it is that you happen to be the one deciding seat that, you know, tips the scale? You, you've reached the tipping point, as the author Malcolm Gladwell spoke, speaks about in his book. Tell us, how would you deal with these issues of trans, lack of transparency and accountability? Well, what we have seen so far is that the head blames the administrators or the public accounts committee, but the head must be held accountable because they are the ones who most likely send those um, those orders at some point in time. So as I said, Dr. Edini said, we have to trigger that public accounts committee and the petition. There must be also swift action by the DPP and the public because we have seen on the platform a lot of persons bringing forward information about accountability and transparency and spending, but why are these information passed to the DPP or the police service? And then you've seen, show me like some ministers who were charged or jailed for any misconduct in public office. I believe now the law must stand strong for politicians who act in public office, who mis misuse public funds, and it takes a leader who will be able to do that to make sure that things get done. And I think that it's all about working together. It's all about making sure that there's an account to the public and account not to the a public accounts committee alone, but an account to your executive and the people of Tobago. And a month, uh, 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 three months or six months, we, we could have a discourse with the, um, like some like something like what the Prime Minister has, chat and a conversation with the people of Trinidad and Tobago to see how far we are, what our accounts are, how we're spending the money to the people of Tobago. And I think we need to put some effort into actually jailing people and politicians for misconducting public office. Thank you, Nikosi. And, you know, I, I love how Nikosi is forward thinking, you know. Um, so it's now being pitched that maybe the next time this might be conversations with the prime minister. Who knows? So <laughs> let's see where it goes from there, because then that may also hinge on the question of how each party intends to treat with the issue of autonomy. And we want to get straight to the point autonomy, secession, independence, what are your views on this, Mr. Farley? And we need to hear how does the PDP intend to treat with those issues. And it's been squarely put there out on the campaign trail that, you know, um, there's been talk from your side of secession. So let's hear how would Farley treat with these issues of autonomy for Tobago going forward more than how Farley will treat the issues, how PDP will treat the issue of autonomy, is that firstly, we must recognize that if we talk <coughs> in autonomy, 
We are talking about the right of Tobagonians to decide and determine the type of government they want. That's the first step. It's not autonomy if someone else is trying to decide what that type of government is. Number two, uh, when we... Okay, and let me ask you this, two, Farley. Yeah? Have Tobagonians decided what type oh, of yes, governance and, they want? And, yes, and, and there, there has been... Share it with us. Sure, Tell us. There, there has been several consultations, several discussions, several reports, several and papers. And which one is it that they want? Every single one of them point to a singular idea. And even when the Prime Minister carried his bill before Parliament to take it to a JC, he said Tobagonians want a federal type government. Those were his words. Those were also the yes, words. But, but Ali, I, I, I will words, ask Denise to, to, to answer. But those you. were also the words that were in the report that was sent by Mr. London to Trinidad. Those were similar words to what Ashwood Jack and those in TOP were using. However, by the time we get to a joint select committee, we had the chair of that committee saying, we are not considering any federal type system against what the people and want. And that's the point I want Denise to take up. Denise, okay, so Farley is saying that Tobagonians generally want a federal type, type system. system. But a federal type system means that it's not just Tobago in that federal union. It means Trinidad that union also. So how do you think that can work? Because in other words, you're not just convincing Tobago to change its status. It means you're placing a duty on Trinidad to change its status also. So, because if you think of it, St. Kitts Nevis, that's, a, that's an Kitts example. Nevis, in St. Kitts Nevis, Nevis has a state government. Right. St. Kitts does not. That's right. They yes. call themselves a federation, but St. Kitts does not have a separate that is, state. That is indeed correct. So, so, so there is a pattern let me hear from within, Denise a pattern within the she... Commonwealth whereby you could have two islands, a federal system, yes. with one having a state a government, state and, government the other and the other one not. So let, let's hear Denise and her thoughts on it. Well, I think that... <laughs> Trinidad is not going to roll over easily and give us what we want. You know, at the end of the day, it's to me, it goes beyond party politics. Mm -hmm. It really is about Trinidad versus Tobago. And we have seen time and time again where we have not been able to, to, to get what we want despite which party is in power. And it is only when Tobago unites itself um, the people are united and they're prepared to say to Trinidad clearly, this is what we want, regardless of party. That is when, you know, uh, things would happen. And we all have seen that there's no way that the um, ruling party is going to collaborate with, you know, uh, the opposition in Tobago or that one in Trinidad. There's no way they're going to come together. Um, and therefore, we are saying that, you know, the, the IDA has the unique opportunity to really unite the people, unite the people so that we can forward this issue of greater autonomy for us. And, and additionally, we have to show that we are more than just depending on that 4%. We have to show some strength. And that is what comes into us really uh, working on growing our economy to the point where, you know, hey, we could say to them, listen, you know, it's time. We want our... All right, thank you. I, I heard some time. noises from Nicosi's corner. I don't know if it's a constituent <laughs> um, clamoring for attention. But Nicosi, let's hear your thoughts on this. Um, what I will say is that under my leadership, I can tell you for sure, that there will not be any secession. Because let's face facts. People are clamoring for secession. They want to separate from Trinidad. Where are we getting our funds from? What are we standing on besides tourism? Because that's dead. Our agricultural sector, we need to be more smart here. The, the Prime Minister, um, I remember Mr. Farley, we had a discussion with um, the Honorable Senator Dillon. She called us to a meeting. And we took three days to go through the Constitution Amendment to Bego Cell Government Bill and the Island Government. We made recommendations as a team. And also, I took it upon myself as the, as the political leader to unity of the people. 
after consulting with the executive, we wrote to the Joint Select Committee with our changes after that meeting, but we still, as the political leader, supported the bills before the parliament, right? Now, we have to think about, under my leadership, we have to do this together. And a lot of people is saying that it would not work, but it would work if we all sit to be going to, sit to discuss the biggest interest. Now, the opposition was also sent this document. And the opposition, I don't know, I, honestly, we cannot be dogging at them. We must have a, a united collaboration. Under my leadership, I will have all the political leaders of Tobago and the political leader of the PNM Trina, which is the, the prime minister and the opposition. And we sit after this and decide where do we want to take Tobago forward, right? Okay. That is how right. we're supposed to move forward with this. Excellent. Thank you, Nikosi. Fali, you I wanted just, to just, chip just, in. Just to quickly say that, that which Dr. Angus and Nikosi are suggesting about unity, we have tried. In fact, after the bill that went before parliament omitted several key things that Togonians said they wanted, and there was a pushback, the parliament offered Tobago 15 days to provide amendments. Mm -hmm. Dr. Um, Dillon, uh, Mr. Hochoy Charles, Nikosi, myself, uh, Mrs. Davison Celestine, Mr. Dennis, members of CivilNet, uh, Dr. Angus, the party wasn't formed as yet, but those of us who were in the political space, we all met. We met online, we met in person, we went through everything line by line, detail by detail, by the time we were ready to send to Trinidad or propose amendments, of course, the PNM backpedaled and said they didn't want to support those amendments. We sent the amendments down to Trinidad nonetheless. And since then, we have heard zilch, nada, nothing. Absolute silence across the pond <coughs> on what we propose to fix the bill. And, and that is see, exactly it, it my comes point. back to what, I mean, in a way, mm -hmm. Denise is saying that, look, PNM doesn't want they, 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 yes, but apart from that, Farley, there, there has to come some reckoning and realization that unless Tobago gets to a position where it's able to stand on its own economically, then you are always going to be dependent but, but, upon but, but the, thing is, the central government agreeing or acquiescing. But part of that argument is so hinged like on a false people. premise and false mathematics. I heard the prime minister saying we only contribute 200 million. That might be taxes, but the Prime Minister never considered how much we contribute from hydrocarbons being taken out of our waters. How come that is not covered in the equation of what we contribute to the national purse? How come we don't find the way, the arithmetic, to separate the taxes paid by banks and multinationals and, and companies that exist in both islands but pay all the taxes in Trinidad? So what we have happening mm -hmm. is a false narrative that all and only what we contribute is 200 million. And we forget all the other contributions that are made. We ignore them, including hydrocarbons, because as far as the PNM is concerned, Tobago owns no water at all. And, and that <laughs> helps with the argument that you as can't stand the, on your own. This is not okay. a new argument. It's not a new argument. It, it, for generations, we have been deprived of feeling as if we contribute to the national purse. And therefore, we have to just accept that that is where it is right now. Uh, our talking, continuous talking, is not going to change that fact. And therefore, we need to find different ways of building ourselves and diversifying the, diversifying the economy of Tobago. Right. On that note, Denise, let's just hear from Nikosi. Right? So we're moving along. We've heard talk about the private sector in Tobago. Um, in fact, I think the Prime Minister did make some mention of the private sector and, you know, um, the fact that it's not really, um, you know, employing as many people as it ought to. So, Nikosi, what would you do differently to help revitalize the private sector and the island? And what are your plans for, for that? Well, first of all, we have to have a conversation with the private sector, knowing what are their um, downfalls. We're looking at the, the inter-island ferry service, the timely service of the goods and services. We have to look at also international, the cost of the things coming in. Now, for us, we, we for employment, we've got um, their partnership with it. For my constituency, we're looking to work with the private sector in regards to employment and unemployment issues. Um, we're seeing a lot of more of those um, supermarkets and their, 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 
they're hiring non-nationals like Venezuelans and not thing, but you have to ask the question, do the people of Tobago really want to work? And you have to look at the questions of, do they want to work? If they get the, the opportunity to do work, what are they looking for? Everybody cannot be in the Tobago THA system. And that is what everybody, on my walk about everybody, oh, they want a THA work. No, it cannot work like that. You have to start somewhere. So I believe having a, a conversation with the private sector, looking at their downfalls as how their goods and services have been shipped, the cost of how it is, what do they need to enhance their, um, their, 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 their handlings on going forward of the private sector. We need to have a more a, a robust discussion with the private sector and the government to see how we will be able to help them and utilize them to help the entrepreneurs and unemployment issues in Tobago. Thank you, Nikosi. And you know, it's a very valid point that was touched upon there in terms of the culture, the thinking, the attitude generally in Tobago in terms of how persons view things. And in fact, the World Bank has actually touched upon that issue by saying that culture matters for economic development. So in other words, the, the culture of a people. And when we say that, we're not talking about, you know, culture where you were the secretary for culture, not, not that. We, we talk, right, not performing arts we're talking about, right? We're, we're talking about the ethos, the, the thinking, the mood of the people. So, Denise, tell us, how would you help to improve the culture you know, because Nikosi touched upon the issue of persons just simply saying, well, look, I will sit down and wait on a THA job, you know. So how would you help to improve this culture to make us even, you know, more independent and self-sufficient in terms of entrepreneurship in Tobago? Perhaps we need to begin by reminding uh, Tobagonians who we are, because we used to be um, back in a space where persons were, I mean, they didn't call them entrepreneurs back then. Um, uh, you know, sometimes the word they would probably have called wasn't them invented hustlers, yet. <laughs> you know, but, but we were in a place where persons were more business minded and independent. In fact, a lot of young entrepreneurs would tell you that the reason they got into entrepreneurship is because they saw their grandparents in the market, going to Trinidad, selling things, you know, uh, and, and we used to export more more things before. And so that is where we need to go back. So in shifting the culture back uh, to where we were, we have to start with educational reform. And we have to tailor the education system to the plan development of the island. And we need to introduce money management and the practice of <coughs> utilizing money within the school system. Uh, assisting from, you know, even in primary school, helping them to, as part of agricultural practices in the school, not just as a, as a, as a 4-H hobby, but part of the program, and therefore taking their produce and selling it, you know, when they have the produce to their parents, to friends, and you teach them to handle money from that Excellent. level. Excellent. So let's hear from a former school teacher. In terms of the educating the to Begonian to try to change this culture. How would you approach that? We desperately need a two-track education system. At the moment, our emphasis is on a curriculum and on a very traditional direction that we have adopted from neighboring Trinidad. When I say a two-track system, I'm talking about having with equal importance technical vocational subjects. Uh, the creative arts, those who want to sing, to dance. So you're speaking economy. of the systems so, that's so operate in Europe right, where correct. it's on, the, on par. It's a on baker, par. Uh, a, a carpenter exactly. and when you do that is now, as qualified as someone correct. with a philosophy uh, degree. Exactly. And when yes. you do that now, you show people that there is value behind their talent, whatever that talent is. And you show people that you don't have to succeed in only one track in order for your society to respect and recognize you. We also have to recognize that Tobago has perhaps the highest outward migration rate in the region. And that's owing to the fact that the THA has crippled the private sector by competing directly with the private sector in many ways and, ha and has disallowed several opportunities on the island. 
And in so doing, people migrate to where they think greater opportunities are, where they can make money. If you show people that their talents and passions can allow them to make money right here in Tobago, you provide the avenues for it right here in Tobago, people will stay, they will own the craft, they will own the skill, and they will sell, sell that. But we have not educated people into believing that, look, I am just as good as the doctor or the, or the lawyer. But okay, I think we also need to recognize that yes. 50,000 people cannot sustain a, a, a business seriously in Tobago. And we have to get our entrepreneurs more into thinking about export. And so whatever you're doing, think about the you know, all of persons up the region, the millions of persons that we have between here, the region, and also Latin America. So in other words, to your markets must be regional correct, or international. Correct. But, but, if we don't have the market here, we have to start letting okay, people right. think we have to go to about a break, but, but, sure, but just quickly, just to say, the reason why we only have 50,000 people here is not that Tobagonians stop making children. It's because Tobagonians are leaving. There are more Tobagonians yeah. living outside of Tobago than living in Tobago. There are more Tobagonians living in Trinidad than, than in living Tobago. here. They are right? making less and, children. And we came from 13 <laughs> and 15 no, 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 children no, 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 but, down to 2, 1, and 0. No, no, but, but it's, so, not that, it's not that we have stopped making children. They still are. But, they are, but the fact is, we have more Tobagonians living abroad, living yes. in neighboring Trinidad and living on the island. Yes. While well, I agree yes, that, to Trinidad, that for the Tobago businessman, we have not a population of 50,000. We have a population of 1.4 million. Because there's Trinidad right next door that you don't need a visa or passport to go yeah, but to. But persons so are not looking at it that way. I, 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 and we, we have to teach, think that it's we have just to a teach, We have to teach enough. people to look at it that way okay. and find All a way right. to okay. bring our diaspora back home. All right, good. Very, very lively discussion. So let's head to a break and then we will dive back in to hear Nikosi's thoughts on this topic. <laughs> You can now get whatever you need whenever you need it anywhere in Tobago with Tapago. Your meals, medication, groceries, and shopping all delivered directly to you. No more hassle, no more stress. Get the Tapago app today on Google Play or Apple App Store. That's T A P P O G O, and let us deliver to you. Check our website at www.tapogo.app or call the experts at 494 T O G O and 484 4746. Tapago, relax. We will get it to you. Tapago's at your service. The Elections and Boundaries Commission wishes to advise all eligible electors that poll cards for the Tobago House of Assembly elections are now being distributed. Check your mailbox regularly or visit the TG Post delivery office where you collect your mail for your poll card. If you didn't receive your poll card, you can still vote. A poll card will be provided for you at the polling station on election day. Employers are also reminded that the law requires employees who are electors in the workplace be given the mandatory two hours time off to vote. Remember, no cell phones will be allowed in the voting booth. All cell phones are to be placed in the container provided at the polling station. Voting is quick, simple, easy and safe. A message from the Elections and Boundaries Commission, your partners in democracy. The people, the personalities, the candidates, the results. Keep viewing Tobago Channel 5 as we bring to you all the results and reactions from the party headquarters on election night, December 6, 2021, from 6 p.m. Stay with the election leader, Tobago Channel 5, for THA elections 2021-2022. The Race for Power, Part 2. Visit Sew so Amazing Limited for all your sewing machine needs. We supply, service and repair all types of sewing machines. We provide two weeks warranty on all service and repairs. Check us out at Unit 4, D Plaza Dutch Fort Scarborough, Tobago for our specialty Singer Domestic Heavy Duty Machines. Our opening hours are Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call us at 309-6350 and 710-4749 or WhatsApp for technical assistance. Tune in to Tobago Channel 5 and Pulse 89.5 FM on Thursday, 2nd December at 6 p.m. for part two of a THA election special broadcast 
on Tobago's autonomy and economy with attorney at law Deborah Mormigans and Dr. Vanish James. When you need electronics, find what you want quickly at Ted Electronics. We have tons of brand name items in smartphones, tablets, LCD and smart TVs, headphones, and speakers. For the best in electronics, check Ted. Amazing service and the lowest prices guaranteed. Located upstairs, Morshead Plaza, Bethany Road, Tobago. Ted Electronics, your ideal choice for electronics. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers, and those who are streaming us live on Facebook and those who are, you know, in the wider diaspora taking in this show. We are glad to have you with us as we continue our conversations with the chief. And speaking of the wider diaspora, Nikosi, could you share with us your ideas as to how you would try to tap in to the resources of all these Tobagonians who are spread so far and wide. We have Tobagonians in almost every corner of the world. You know, I mean, I was in Hawaii and the custom, one of the immigration officers was a Tobagonian who hailed me out. You know, we, we, we are everywhere. You know, so tell us, Nikosi, how would you tap in to this wonderful and massive resource we have of Tobagonians who are successful, powerful, you're wealthy, you know, capable, talented, all over the world. How can we make this work for Tobago? Let's hear your thoughts, Nikosi. Well, first of all, we have to stop the nepotism. Um, we have, what, one of my things that I'll be working on is a culture, I'm a youth ability gifting program whereby we tap into the skills of our young people in Tobago, especially our constituents of Bukum and Pleasant. For example, these young men, sometimes when I walk in, I'm hearing young men spitting, rapping on the road, they're rapping. So I was like, these young men could sing. And if you hear these young men vocals, it, it's like, wow. Um, right now, I'm working with some of these young men who are doing music to have them a grant. They don't have people to help them, assist them with their grants to do their music videos and to teach them. There's no cultural place where you could go to get um, music done. You have to find somebody who likes the music. So I'm going to be using the cultural aspect of the tourism sector, especially, to bring the cultural aspect, because you cannot have tourism if you do not understand your culture and where you come from. So we're going to put a lot of cultural programs. We're going to have accessibility to grants for these young men who want to start a little music video and the dance groups. We're going to... Um, to help the NGOs within the community. You know, we have too much of space NGOs all out. For example, you have a dance group in Bugu, you have one in Mount Pleasant. Partner them together, put them together, have dancing programs. We have the, the cultural community center. Use the community centers for the groups to dance. You have the community centers locked up. You have to call somebody. So what I'm going to do is tap into the culture of Tobago. Make sure there's an availability of space when a person finishes their degree. Because a lot of people finish their degree and they, they're working in gas station with 13 subjects. Because why? When you apply for a job, you're not getting it. And it happened to me already. I applied for a job. They told me the space is filled. What I did was change my name on the, the, um, the application and the, um, the CV. Just changed the name to a fake name. Left all the information. They called me right after to tell me I have an interview. When I went to the interview, they were asking me, wait. What are you doing here? I said, I can't find it, but we have no interview with you. When I told them the name of the application, but how can you do that? That's forged. I said, no, it's not forged. You okay. told me that the position was filled. So we have to All stop right. the nepotism, focus That's... on the young people, and see how best we can get um, uh, in touch with okay. their cultural abilities and work and open their Thank uh, entrepreneurship. You. Um, Thank you, Nikosi. Thank you very much. All right, so that was inward looking, but really we want to focus on... Try to capture the energy, the vibe, the potential, the dynamic that resides out there in this great mass of persons who are connected because there's a connectivity that Tobagonians have wherever they are in the world. How would you, in the IDA, tap into that and make it work for Tobago? And I'm happy you said that because in the IDA, as part of our constitution, we do have a diaspora arm. 
Okay. Yes. And we are recognizing from the start that there are to be Gonians everywhere outside of this island and we have to start finding ways to utilize uh, their um, experiences and network the skills. And so as that our first step was to ensure that we created that arm and we actually do have a few um, persons from the diaspora as members and, and, and working with us. Additionally, in an assembly to create a structured program for think tanks in various sectors. So what you get in terms of you know, the, the, the output of a sector comes as a result of young people, uh, experienced people, and also those from external who have experience in that area. And so we expect to see a, a, a more effective and um, efficiently functioning assembly and a modernized assembly given all of the input that we will receive. From, okay, great. Yes. Rifali, build on that idea. Let's hear Certainly. how would the PDP, you know, try to maximize this potential? Well, since 2017, we have had an international arm of the PDP that is active and for a lot of our social programs. But I believe we ought to aggressively attract members from our diaspora. We need to incentivize their return here. We need to make uh, lands available for them to come and reinvest in Tobago. We should target them as our first option for building out our tourism sector, for building new hotels and so on, before we target um, people beyond the diaspora. We also have to change our attitudes. We tend to turn a deaf ear to people who are from the diaspora. We tend to shun them because they leave via your back home. We need to let them know that they can contribute more to Tobago beyond just sending monies through Western Union or sending a barrel back home. That we want them to come home and give off their time and their talent. When we are looking for consultants, we should also favor looking within the diaspora to find consultants to come and give us support. When we're looking for expert opinions, we should also favor looking within the, the diaspora. We tend to look wider and beyond that. Um, but we have, as you have mentioned, real plenty of Bogonians who are talented, who are experts. Many are very wealthy. Many are captains of industries. They turn to Tobago and to our economic space. Well, you okay. want some clarity. Yes, you, yes. Is there an actual international arm in your constitution? <laughs> oh, yes. Or you have actually, people working with the constitution where, and we also have an actual Denise international doesn't seem happy committee. with this answer. It's it looks like happy. Denise has studied it's, the constitution question, of the whether, PDP. No, well, well I, I, can send you a, I, can say, I can send you a copy so, of our constitution. Um, <laughs> and in fact, you should be able to get one because you have some defecting members from our party with you. So that shouldn't be too hard for you to get. <laughs> but I'm putting it to you that we have an actual international committee that supports the party that is actually so, at work. Is, is it like you, you suggested this funds. was your original idea or because um, you, you, you seem you seem no you know, I mean it's, it's quite to well, hear this from well yeah because I mean um we have done our research and um we understand that you don't have well your research your, your fact, research no, fell short no no um None of the parties actually have an that international is, that is not as true. part of their constitution. That is, and I'm saying without so, any um, possibility of being rejected, that that is untrue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. in, in fact, in, in fact I, I was a part of our international committee. I can show you the, 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 the WhatsApp thread with those who are part of that committee. I can also show you <laughs> the programs, the social programs, that have been done by members of um, um, Bread of Love program, Loaves of Love program that I did. Quite a bit of that came from monies that came from our international arm. Um, when we, our ads on, on the radio 
came from the international arm. Okay. And some of our jerseys and so on. I'm not having persons work with you. Okay, yes. No, you but know, she's asking about the constitution. And, and, and I'm saying, but, 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 I'm saying let's, but that's part of our constitution. It is part there. of our constitutional <laughs> arrangement. It is part of our constitutional <laughs> arrangement. Because okay. it's all right. Okay. All right. Nick, Nick. Maybe, maybe Miss Dr. Angus wants to come and join the PDP right. because you well, we seem more interested in, in our internal business than our own. But I am. Well, you know, right. I but let's wait. Just so um, before right, I folks, attempt to let, let, Let's just hear the Let's hear. Let's hear the point. Let's just hear the point. Yes, the Well, when you said I only did an internal arrangement, you see, what we have to do first is fix our own. We cannot invite the people back into Trip Tobago if we don't have a space for them. So that's what I'm saying, to fix your own first and fix up something and set it up. Because we, I, I can possibly say, and Dr. Angus, I know you can vouch for me, that I have been working with the international arena. When, since I go to the United Nations, I have been selling our projects there because a lot of, for example, a youth rehabilitation camp hope facility. We have been offered money for that project that I have been trying to clamor here in Tobago, and I have been rejected by the previous administration. I've gone to them for help. So people would not, why would they want to come back here if we do not have anything in place for them? So that All is right. why I was making the statement on the arrangements, and you know, yes. we have to fix here first before right. we allow and, them and, to and come And I back. like, I like you know, that, I like that point, Nikosi, but just bear in mind, it sounds like Farley may want to recruit you also because when you start with the fix, the talk about fixing it and fixing no, but, but it, is, you know, I he want, might, he I might want think us, you I also. Want us, I want us to see that the Togonians living abroad is also our own. So when we're saying fix our own, it must include members of the diaspora. We have to remember that a significant number of our people migrated because of poor management of the Tobago House of Assembly yes, and, and exactly. poor management of our economy. And we cannot fault them for wanting to go to a place where they feel like they can get access to opportunities they cannot get here. And part of fixing our own must mean thinking of members of our diaspora as our own. All right, but let's hear Denise, because Denise is still not happy <laughs> on this topic. So yes, Denise, so um, in terms of, you know, building on what Farley just said there, how would you view it differently from the IDA as opposed to whatever Farley says the PDP has in their constitution? Well, you must have, I mean, we, we cannot continue to feel like, uh, to be going on, so have lived elsewhere are now foreigners when they come back home. And I had to some extent that experience until I mean I've been back long enough now. And so we have to begin shifting that. And again, that culture. So whilst we offer, you know, platforms for their return, and you know, some of them, they're not interested in returning, you know, but they want to help, they want to contribute. And so we create the platforms for the contributions of Tobagonians to the development of Tobago in any way that they so wish to do. Okay. All right. Okay. So tell us now, Farley, if you become chief secretary on the 7th or whatever day after, in your first 100 days, Tell us what would be your first priorities and your immediate, your 100 day plan. Let's hear what that would be. The first priority will be to, to set up a budget for Tobago. You will recall that we were unable to have a Tobago budget as is required by law in June. There has been a subvention declared in the national budget, but there's a, there will be an urgent need before trying to spend money and go on massive projects to set up a budget for the fiscal year 2022. We also will be looking immediately into bringing forensic auditors in to look at some trouble spots within the THA. Because if we are arguing from the outside that we have these mismanagement issues, we better figure out what are the exact causes of those issues and be guided so that we can avoid the same pitfalls that we have been in. 
over in the first 100 days, we also will be looking once for unity, many of whom uh, have no real hope of reopening post these lockdowns because they have been so significantly hard hit. That can assist, if, if we can assist those businesses in getting back up and running within the first 100 days, that will then have a chain reaction in bringing their employees back out um, because we, we, we have so many people who have lost jobs and lost significant earnings because the places where they work all collapse. And that has to be a priority for us as we create a new paradigm whereby we support the private sector, especially small and micro enterprises. All right, great. So Nikosi, in a 771 scenario where Nikosi sits as chief secretary, what would be your priority in your first 100 days? My priority is to foster a relationship with all political entity and the political executive and opposition, whoever the opposition will be, and whoever I choose to ascend the one seat to. The second thing is to set up a COVID committee with the political leaders, inviting also the Minister of Health and the Prime Minister and opposition to have a detailed discussion on how we all, because as you can see, the vaccinations don't help us that much. But we all must have a collaboration because it will involve reopening of the full economy of Tobago and how we treat with COVID going back and going forward and the beaches. The, one of the other things that I will also do is to start the discussion one time immediately about the Tobago self government because we must have sense to know that with the 15 seats now and the two bills before the parliament that is not um, assented yet or um, um, accepted by the UNC yet, how does the 15 seats work in comparison to the two bills that haven't been passed as yet? So those are the discussions. We also will have to look at the resources that we have to work with and how we can help the business sector and the people who are unemployed in Tobago and what can we do for them with immediate because a lot of social help is needed. So those are some of the things that I will look at. We have to start to foster that relationship. And my leadership is about fostering the relationship with the central government the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and let him know that even though he may want to platform the threaten us and say that if he does not win or his party does not win, we will not get this and it will be a hard relationship. With me, it will not be a hard relationship because we will find other means of getting the relationship because you are the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and I Tobago. And yes. A, yes. yes, yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Nikosi. So a collaborative approach. Okay, so Denise, your first 100 days as the first IDA chief secretary, what would be your priorities? First of all, we need to recognize that, again, with the type of spending that we have had leading up to this election and the number of jobs that have been offered and people who are take, have been taken on, that we are going into a challenging period when we get into the assembly. They may very well have blown uh, more than half, more than three quarter of the budget, you know, just, just dealing with what they're dealing with for, uh, for this election. And so it's really so an are assessment. are speaking of election sweeteners and of course, inducements? It has been a shameful display. And I might I say desperate display of uh, inducements across the island. They, they pave, I think they've paved the whole of Tobago by now. Um, they have handed out, um, you know, out of the 50 million to, to different persons. And there's nothing wrong with, with, with that. Yes, it's needed, but it's the timing of everything. It's the timing, you know, giving away a whole uh, lot of lands to the agricultural sector. And, you know, that's my pet peeve. You give away the lands, but you're not stating what you expect from those lands, from your farmers. Uh, okay. So it's so you really it doing that. political gamesmanship. Of course. So we have to do a true assessment and understand where we are. And given the timing that we have, we need to make sure that we can balance in terms of the number of people who have been hired, because you definitely don't want to just send people home they have been taken on and you have to find ways of working with that. Uh, once we come up with that, we then need to meet with all of the people across Tobago, your churches, your NGOs, your CBOs, your, you know, your different sectors. 
and let them have a true understanding of the picture. We then together come up with short term, medium term and uh, a long term plan. And we begin to proceed from there. In addition to that, we have to give that support to the private sector to begin the assistance towards them, you know, rebounding. Uh, because they are the ones who are going to take us out of this challenge that we are okay, in. Great. And growing our, you know, getting more micro entrepreneurs, my, uh, small businesses involved, beginning to grow them, they also feed into your medium and your larger size businesses. Okay, great. As Thanks a lot. Group. All right. So, um, Farley, tell us in terms of your assessment of the way the COVID-19 pandemic has been handled, because Nikosi touched on that, um, you know, in the answer given. How would a PDP administration manage it differently from the way it's being managed currently? Well, first of all, we will actually have someone qualified to lead the healthcare uh, aspect of the Tobago House of Assembly. So that's the first step. Someone qualified and expert in that area. <clears throat> Secondly, we have to rethink and revisit our parallel healthcare system. Our current parallel system has collapsed. In fact, the only thing that we seem to be trying to treat now is COVID-19. But everything else has collapsed in and around it. And, this, and, and what is interesting is that we spent more than a year begging them on the other side. Let's have our own testing facility. Let us set up a parallel system. Let us uh, not wait until it hit home to push everybody in the general hospital. Set up a separate institution immediately. We had even suggested using uh, the Mariah Health Center, which was uh, just newly completed. Uh, more than a year ago, we have been begging for these things. Did not happen. Nobody took us on. And what has to happen is, is, is that we have to sit and rethink our strategies. We have to rethink our public education campaigns in and around the virus. We have to ensure that we have sufficient <coughs> workers. We have to treat our workers well because we're getting quite a bit of complaint from the healthcare professionals about how they are treated even uh, during this pandemic and with the work and the, and the extra effort we require from them. We have to treat them well so that they can give the best quality service to help us bring this down. But above all, we have to also remind Tobagonians to be as responsible as they can with regards to how they, how, how they, they manage themselves uh, during this COVID period. All right, great. All right, so Nicole, following on from that, take the segue from Farley's last point there about Tobagonians managing themselves and let us hear how would your party manage this COVID-19 crisis differently? Nikosi? He's muted. Nikosi, could you unmute, unmute the mic? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, yes. We have to, as Mr. Augustine said, it has to be somebody leading the charge in the medical field. Yes. But also, this is way beyond that. This is about us leaders now trying to find a common ground on how to fight it. And there are issues so involving that. One, the medications are working. There are new variants that are coming up. So we have to set up things in place. We have to set up first um, um, education on the COVID again. We have to give more education because we have new variants coming up. So people have to understand that. We have to community testing. You cannot have somebody positive. Other persons in the household, but you're waiting five to ten days to tell them to come to test or to send somebody. Community testing on a positive person must be done in the household with immediate effect. So we have to look at how we do things and how we treat with the COVID and persons being positive. There are other issues that are surrounding the healthcare. We have diabetes, we have heart issues, we have operations that are on hold. Persons now have to get the x-ray next year. So I think we have to go back. We have to look outside the COVID now. We have to um, settle the healthcare sector, look at the areas of concern beside the COVID because you know COVID is going to be here for a long while, but we have operations. Okay, thank you, Nikosi. It looks like we have other contributors <laughs> adding their voices. 
along with you. But um, Denise, this is your area. This is you. You are a health care professional, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I, I, I'm not sure if it was, uh, you know, uh, a job offer Farley was making when he said, you know, we would need somebody qualified to lead it. But let's hear your thoughts on how would you of the IDA, you know, treat differently with our COVID-19 crisis? Well, perhaps I should say that usually pandemics are run from the highest level and perhaps uh, it's more appropriate at this time to have a medical doctor truly, you know, running the, the um, whole pandemic from a most senior level. Uh, a lot of mistakes have been made. And first and foremost has to do with the education system of the people and not just standing on a TV and shouting to the people, but taking it into people's backyards, taking it in a language that they understand and taking it into their own spaces in terms of uh, you know, explaining to them all of the, you know, protocols that need to be in place and having authentic voices in terms of your nurses. Anybody in a pandemic anywhere would tell you that the most trusted voice in there is the nurse and therefore putting the nurses at the forefront to share the information. I will always say that a level of mistrust was uh, created and perhaps even expanded by how the leaders uh, dealt with it in terms of taking the vaccination. They never went forward first. Uh, many of them delayed until the batch of Sinopharm came and then is when they took it. So people are wondering, well, why didn't you, you take it? You're not leading by example. And then we had situations where the <coughs> quarantine times were different for the various persons. But we also want to embrace who we are and our traditions. And I don't think... Um, it was paid to us building our immune systems, uh, having those beaches opened. You know, open air ventilation is advised, and therefore having the beaches open, giving a better social support program to make sure that it got to the people who actually needed it. Earlier testing and more immediate testing, access to testing. You're telling yeah. me that we had to send things to Trinidad for so long. And I want to put on the table that as part of an IDA administration, we are having a, the holistic yes. medical center where we would be studying, researching our traditional herbs and using it in our treatment okay, program. Good. Good point, Additionally, right. utilizing the marijuana as part of that program right. for medicinal okay, uses. Good. All right. So, Farley, she has touched upon a nerve when she speaks in relation to the issues surrounding the vaccine hesitancy and vaccine resistance, which appears to be part of the challenge in Tobago particularly. All right. She's also spoken of the fact that some persons prefer to say, well, look, I will rely on traditional medicines and traditional methods of healing myself and keeping myself healthy without having need for the vaccine. I would like to hear your thoughts on this and how would you straddle this divide in convincing people, should you take the vaccine, should you rely on traditional medicines? Let's hear you. I have always been an advocate of vaccination by choice. And I've also been an advocate of educating to vaccinate. In fact, I don't believe in mandatory vaccinations um, in, this, in this instance. I don't. I have seen many, many people who are unvaccinated who have not contracted the COVID-19 virus. On, on the converse, I've seen many, many people who are vaccinated who have contracted the virus. So it shows that the virus cuts across both threads. That's why earlier on I harp on the, the need for personal responsibility. I agree and I, and I concur that the is a need to put some emphasis on building um, immune systems and, and, and relying somewhat on, on some of the traditional things that we know. Um, I have long said that we needed to get our young people into taking what we call bush medicine and researching it and developing uh, tonics and pills out, out of it. 
fact, if you go to our mandate in 2020, January 2021, you go to our mandate in August of 2020, you go to our mandate in, in January of 2017, you will find it in all of those mandates. Okay, but um, Farley, but, sorry. But I, 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 no, sorry. Yeah. I, I must um, bring your focus back to the question. You see, I'm, 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 I'm putting the dichotomy squarely to you. Sure. The traditional medicine, which many Tobagonians, they firmly believe the, that is sufficient as opposed to the vaccine. And I'm saying, it, I'm saying that it should not be a case where we say only one is, is preferred or only one is, 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 is advisable and the other isn't. I am saying you vaccinate by choice. We educate people of the benefits of vaccination and we ensure that, that everybody vaccinated and unvaccinated try to maintain all of the I am going beyond that to say that it is evident that a lot of what we have done nationally has not worked. L let's look at a clear logic here. We had a carnival. We had two elections. We had an Easter blitz in Tobago. And still, our numbers are not as, were not as high then as it is now after a state of emergency, a curfew, the shutting down of bars and restaurants and hotels. So how is it that significant lockdowns. Right. So th our that's numbers the general are significantly management more. of the pandemic. Correct. Right. And, and, <clears throat> but the, the thing is, let, let me hear Denise, because you see, I, I want us to really get this issue of the well, vaccine first of as all, opposed I want to, to the take traditional you up on medicine. That issue of, of, of being responsible, because what we saw on nomination day was reckless behavior, downright reckless behavior of, of both parties having a carnival experience within where, where persons are, are were going to, to sign their nomination permanently was a lot of reckless behavior. I, I the numbers know. were rising. Yes, uh, both PNM and PDP, oh, okay. of course. <laughs> and, and, and the numbers of persons out there, it was quite reckless. It was a carnival, and therefore oh. I am not at all surprised that the numbers are where they are today because I spoke about it in my interview, my exit interview in nominations. So that but coming falls back, in Farley's and, and, and I'll, I'll respond afterwards. <laughs> Please, coming back to um, you know the issue of our our um, choices. We have been pro-choice. I've always been pro-choice in my practice, and therefore. Um, but in being pro-choice, you have to arm people with the information. You have to educate them. And it is not just about, you know, the vaccinated or the unvaccinated who will do build their immune system. Everyone has to build their immune systems because you're seeing vaccinated persons who die. And they're also unvaccinated persons, you know, also dying. Okay. So I think building immune systems across the board helping people to educate, ensuring, because the C is not just about, you know, frolicking. The C is very helpful to us. I mean, okay, your grandmother right. would tell you, you know, <laughs> if you have a flu, go and sap, your, sap yourself in the C, go and sap your head, you know? So, so the C is very therapeutic for us as a people. And you have to wonder if not having right. access to all of these things created the bigger problem for us. There are other islands in the Caribbean right. okay. who so have we, we not had these the level of numbers. Yes. And um, you know, we have to ask ourselves why. All right, okay, so let's go to the break. And when we come back, we are going to continue on this very interesting aspect because I know Farl is C. So um, we will be back shortly. We're just going to a commercial break. <laughs> Electronics, find what you want quickly at Ted Electronics. We have tons of brand name items in smartphones, tablets, 
LCD and smart TVs, headphones, and speakers. For the best in electronics, check Ted. Amazing service and the lowest prices guaranteed. Located upstairs, Morshead Plaza, Bethany Road, Tobago. Ted Electronics, your ideal choice for electronics. Tune in to Tobago Channel 5 and Pulse 89.5 FM on Thursday, 2nd December at 6 p.m. for part two of a THA election special broadcast on Tobago's autonomy and economy with attorney at law Deborah Mormigans and Dr. Vanish James. Visit Sew so Amazing Limited for all your sewing machine needs. We supply, service, and repair all types of sewing machines. We provide two weeks warranty on all service and repairs. Check us out at Unit 4, D Plaza, Dutch Fort Scarborough, Tobago for our specialty Singer Domestic Heavy Duty Machines. Our opening hours are Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 9350 and 710-4749 or WhatsApp for technical assistance. You can now get whatever you need whenever you need it anywhere in Tobago with Tapago. Your meals, medication, groceries, and shopping all delivered directly to you. No more hassle, no more stress. Get the Tapago app today on Google Play or Apple App Store. That's T A P P O G O. And let us deliver to you. Check our website at www.tapogo.app or call the experts at 494 T O G O and 484 4746. Tapago. Relax. We will get it to you. Tapago's at your service. Welcome back, viewers, and to those who are streaming it live on Facebook. This presentation of conversations with a chief. And I can tell you the discussion has been quite lively and animated. And those who missed it, whether as viewers or as participants, I think will rue the day when they decided not to tune in to conversations with the chief. So we continue as we were on the topic of the COVID-19 vaccinations, the issue of personal responsibility. And Farley was about to explain, even in terms of leadership, in terms of political parties and personal responsibility, I am sure you would want to touch on that while you also answer and explain in terms of what Denise touched upon as regards the behavior of persons, you know, in their exuberance on nomination and, day. And, and I want us to understand this. From the look of things, COVID-19 isn't going anywhere. Does that mean that Trinidad and Tobago will never get a carnival again? Does that mean that Trinidad and Tobago will never get parties again? Does that mean that there will never again be social functions where people come together? At this point, what we should be insisting on is people wearing their masks and washing their hands as often as is possible. We need to insist on that. Once you are wearing your mask, I have no issue at all. Um, we, we can't on one hand say people shouldn't come together for the election and at the same time say, let us open the beach. What we have to do is to look at how do we as a country reopen our economy and reopen our spaces. If we're also talking wellness, one must understand the psychology of human beings and the need for human interaction. How do we square that off? with the fact that for two years plus, we have been seeking to isolate all of our people, one from the other. Where is the plan that will lead? And that's part of my challenge. I am yet to see a detailed plan of how Trinidad with, with, with the, the, the pandemic, for example. They met their goal in terms of the numbers of people they wanted vaccinated. 
But guess what? The numbers started rising again after that. And they're back to and their mask mandates. They're back to them. And so the point is, I think we need to keep the mask mandate for now, but we have to find a reasonable pathway to reopening our economy, reopening our spaces, and allowing for healthy human interaction. Because okay. I cannot in you in isolation. Okay. All right. I have so, deep wait, 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 wait. Just so I, I, know, I know Denise wants to really be chomping at the bit on this one, and I will allow her a chance. But let's just hear Nikosi briefly on this. Nikosi. Um, this is in regards to the, um, the big entrance and nomination, right? Yes, the carnival. Right. Yeah, well, I could also get a passing for my nominations because I have to squeeze my way through it and then people shouting at you. But at the end of the day, everybody to each his own and they know what they're supposed to do and they think that is how they want you to behave. I think the leaders should have known better to say, okay, good. We're going to have nominations, we're going to open, but we all be a little more um, professional. Um, in regards to the reopening, I don't see whereby we could reopen our water park, but leave our beaches closed. Something has to be totally wrong with our leadership and this, this style of leadership, because we have a road to recovery team for Trinidad, and a road to recovery team, I think the chief secretary had done through tourism. Where are those people and where are the information to recovery to what? So to me, it's an individual, um responsibility and i don't think we we informed enough education as i've said and i've come with in my media conferences education to all these things and an update we just can't have education on a media conference on the health we have to have pamphlets we have to have these things so people can have it in their hand to say okay go, let me read you and see what is omicron delta these are the things that we need and it's an individual responsibility and a hope and i can't blame anybody if they're not informed or if they're ill-informed or if they just want to be reckless, it's up to them. Thank one more thing I'll add to that before Thank I close, you. one more thing, is that we say we only have five to ten um, beds on, in the ICU. But didn't we just get some um, beds in the bed complex or some more tents in, in, um, from the U.S. Embassy? Why aren't those things done in Tobago? Whatever is supposed to be done okay. in Trinidad is supposed to be here as well. Good point, Nikosi. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All and, right. And, yes, and, Denise, <laughs> you've been waiting for your chance what? to answer Farley because you are not happy with his answer at no, all. Because you see, as a <laughs> medical doctor, you know, it, when, I, when I looked at what was happening, I mean, you could predict the significant rise in numbers where we are today in relationship to that event. And I have. I have a serious problem with Farley trying to justify that situation. If we are to, when we are to open, there has to be a systematic rollout of this. And there has to be, you know, policing of how this is occurring. Persons were shoulder to shoulder, hugging up, ma ma mask off. You know, it, it just was totally... Um, no, there were no protocols in place at that time. And I had to literally bob and weave, just like um, the course said, bob and weave through a crowd, you know, to get to my, no social distancing whatsoever. And so they have to take responsibility, both sides, for where we are now with these increasing numbers. And it is quite unfortunate. But Going back to, to and I want to endorse the course here, because those mobile hospitals came to Trinidad. Two were supposed to be for Tobago. They have not arrived in Tobago yet. Where are those hospitals for Tobago? Why aren't they here? So that if we have additional um, space, if we have a, a, a need for additional beds, we can utilize it. And that now gets us into the area in, 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 in Roxborough. A hospital that really can't open yet. I see. I heard that they were taking patients by night into the hospital. Persons needing CT scans out there. You have a machine, but no staff. And in 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 Scarborough, you have staff and no machine. Right. You can't okay. run so an institution and, like and, that. Let's just say a funny response that will always to happen that. Once PNM in charge, let's be let's be frank. Well, there's only let's one thing it, we are going. Let's on call tonight. it what it is. Let's call it yeah. what it is. Yes, I mean, exactly. Doctor Angus was part of them, so she should know how. They operate culturally based on the political culture. 
autonomous in its decision making goes out the window. And just for right? a sense of balance and for our viewers and listeners, mm -hmm. we invited all the political parties Them choose to not be to present, come. Then we know that. And those who are not here are those who opted out. Not to, right. But 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 it needs to be said. It needs to be said. Additionally, we <laughs> Then a year, more than a year, long before Dr. Angus talking on this program, for more than a year, we have been asking for the, test, the testing facilities here. We have been having debates in the house about a parallel system. We have been begging for, to separate the, the COVID patients from the general hosp hospital. For more than a year, we have been saying it. Go through the Hansa records more than a year. And it reached a point where those on the other side po posited that, look, we in charge. Don't tell us what to do. Don't tell us how to run it. We in charge. That was their position. And in fairness, Pali, I mean, Dr. Angus is now reformed. So, you know. <laughs> okay. I'm saying that she, more than any of us here, will understand their political culture because she was a member of that party. So she understands how they yep. behave. But I'm, I'm there's not, nothing I'm not, wrong with it. At least I no, had the courage I am to not, say I'm that not, I am no longer. And I'm not and I'm not I'm to, not in to, any to way challenging where she is now or saying that where she is now is a disingenuous place. No. I'm just simply saying that she more than the other two of us are more expert at understanding how they behave. Hmm? Whereby we talk this autonomy talk and we project as though we want it, but when it matters most. We refuse to stand up for the things that we need, right? So, yes, field hospitals were to come for Tobago, Trinidad Tech Hall, and you hear not a note from Tobago. Not a note, but we plans to outside us to build hotel. But we do make a note. We are making a note, song in a note when it comes to the things that matters right. most. points that Farley is making. Um, you know, we, we have to endorse the fact that the current administration has remained mum out of many things. You know, yeah. the fact that, you know, the, the mobile hospitals have that, that the beaches have not been opened and you hear nothing from them. You're giving persons uh, Fifty million towards the sector to operationalize the sector. What are they operationalizing it to do when your beaches remain closed? You have to be able to say to your your family in Trinidad that, or your bosses in Trinidad that, hey, um, we're doing this, but we need the beaches open to really get the Let's head to a break, and we will come back, and we need to touch on that in the ships between Trinidad and Tobago in terms of central government and the THA and how that dynamic works. I really want us to touch on that sure. um, in terms of...
effect of that was essentially, he was told to shut up and sit down. So if you are of the same political stripes or party colors or affiliation as the central government, how then do you stand up central government as distinct from the needs of Tobago, which your constituents in Tobago are clamoring for? We've heard the candidates speak about, you know, their dissatisfaction with what appears to be an acquiescence and a silence by those who are currently in power because they are afraid to speak out against their leaders from central government in Trinidad. So let's start with Denise. Tell us, how would IDA treat differently with this if you had that you know, same commonality of leadership in central government as opposed to the THA? Perhaps I need to reflect on a recent conversation I had with my mom before she passed, um, you know, where, where she was sharing her experiences through different administrations. And, you know, she also felt that young people should experience different administrations and it should not just be one thing continuous, continuously. But I remember her saying that in her view, she felt that the best times for Tobago is when you had a government in Tobago that was not aligned to a government in Trinidad. And Tobago got more during those times. And so uh, an IDA will be positioned best because we are not aligned with anyone in Trinidad, whether the PNM or the UNC. And therefore, we will be able to negotiate in Tobago's best interest to get everything because they will always, once you're not aligned, they will always want to give Tobago what it wants so that they could attempt to keep you in their good books. Okay, and, and so that, that is gives what... a beautiful segue for Farley Absolutely. to deal with this question of being aligned to either the PNM or the UNC or aligned in any way to a, a political entity that is in government or can form part of the government in central government in Trinidad. So let's hear you, Farley. Well, because there, there have been oh, yeah, you know, yeah, statements yeah. made. So and, let's clear the and, air, and, let's and clear think, you on this. I, I think Dr. Angus's position that she just muted is quite interesting because if we take her analysis and the analysis of her mom, it means that the last 21 years we have had in Tobago were not as successful for the most part because for the most part of those 21 years, we had the same government in Tobago as in Trinidad. And it's also interesting that Don, Dr. Angus was part of that team too. And it's only upon not being elected by her party to lead her party and being shafted by the newly elected leader that she found a voice and recognized that the system of which she advocated for and which she told Tobagoans in the past that look, if you vote for the same party in Tobago as in Trinidad, you get better. That she has now realized well, that, that she, is wrong. She's come to a realization and, 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 now. And, 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 and she's better she, late than never. Better late than better late than never. But and there's nothing wrong with I, learning but lessons if we look and at the, building on if it. If you look at the political history of Tobago, first THA, Tobago had two standalone members of parliament to get the first THA. Act 40 of 1996 came about when there were 17. 17-2. Again, Tobago voted differently from the rest of the country, and Tobago had a chance to, to negotiate. And I've made the point over and over again. In fact, I made it up to last week. I said, if Tobago's two MPs in this current situation were non-PNM MPs, we would have had a minority government in Trinidad, which would mean that anything the government wants to pass the government would have needed the vote of the two Tobago MPs. That's what the numbers suggest. And to me, there is greater power in standing alone than trying to be a member of somebody's cabinet or to, unless, of course, you're going to become prime minister like Robinson um, ended up doing between 86 and 91. But cabinet with a party in Trinidad that does not advance Tobago's needs, there is a tendency 
to, to just support whatever your bigger brother or sister says in Trinidad. Okay, all right. So, and let's hear Nikosi on that point. Nikosi, the idea is, and of course, we know that this is your trump card because you've said that, look, you're hoping for a 771 seven, where you basically, um, you know, hold the, the balance of power. So in terms of the relationship between central government in Trinidad and the leadership of the THA, should it be from the same political party or same political affiliation or political stripes, even though, you know, Mr. Augustine didn't really touch on the, the nub of the issue, but we, we, will leave, we will leave that. <laughs> but let's hear you on it, <laughs> Nikosi. Yes, I think it should be from the opposite because we have seen the two representatives from the same party, they don't speak for the people of Tobago. They speak for their representative and their representation to their people and their party. Um, I believe going forward, remember the 7-7, seven, seven, I still have to choose which one of the colors that I will be able to leave or to go forward with in order to get things to be done. So that is still on the table. And this is, what I will do is not go to be able to ransom. Those decisions, based on I've been watching at the both parties and other parties on the, on the platform, I've been making good decisions so far. And, on that day, I'll make a wise decision. But a relationship with certain government and the government of Trinidad and Tobago has to be fostered. And as I said before, the prime minister can say to Tobago that they wouldn't get that and what will happen. But as the, the prime minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, you are obligated by law and constitution to give Tobago what it wants. And I Thank will not you. be in a battle for the prime minister, but I will have... I will have dialogue with him and the central government and with the team that I'll be leading and we'll have meaningful conversations to the people of Tobago because if you are the prime minister and you withhold the funds from Tobago, well then, let's come 2025 laws. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nikosi. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it has really been a wonderful and very engaging evening, um, you know, viewers. And, you know, we really would like to thank you all for being here with us. We thank you for your time. We know this is an extremely busy time. And I mean, of course, Denise's personal um, circumstances, we certainly appreciate you um, still making the effort, notwithstanding everything, you know, to be here with us. And, you know, we thank you, Nikosi, um, for attending even um, by the Zoom, you know. Um, and again, we just want to let everyone know that all the political parties were invited and we think that certainly given the depth of the conversations and the discussions we had the breadth of our ideas that were expressed and espoused uh we think that those who missed out on this are you know the ones who really can end up being worse for it because we think that these are the ways that we get to elevate the level of discourse. We get to raise the discussion. We get to engage in meaningful exchange of ideas apart from the pecong and the slander and the bacchanalia which normally attends the hustings on the election platform. So again, we thank our guests. We thank you, um, Mr. Fali Agassin. We thank you, Ms. Denise. And we thank Nikosi for all being here tonight. We thank the Civil Net Society for organizing this and hosting it. We thank Channel 5 for facilitating us in their studios. And we thank you, the viewers, you, the persons who followed us on Facebook, and you, the people of Tobago and Trinidad. And I make no apologies for the order in which I say that. And we thank you all in the wider diaspora. And we wish you all a good night. Yeah.